highlighting history of suburban Sydney with the St Peter's Cooks River History Group. Our aim is to preserve and promote local history. We are based at St Peter's in Sydney's Inner West. Erwood, a suburb of Sydney, is located 10 kilometres southwest of the Sydney Central Business District. It extends from the southern bank of Cooks River to the northern bank of Woolai Creek. Evidence of Indigenous occupation before white settlement can be seen in caves under the sandstone cliffs along Walleye Creek. A nail maker, John Parks, also known as Perks and Sparks, was one of the earliest settlers in the district. The 50-acre area of Parks Camp is now the centre of the suburb. The family earned a living as sawyers, supplying Sydney with building timber and firewood. Other early landowners were Arthur Martin, George Tyrrell, Patrick Moore, Abraham Pollock and Joshua Thorpe. Thorpe, assistant engineer of the colony, had a 70-acre farm called Ewan Munna, an Aboriginal word meaning go away. Frederick White Unwin purchased Martin's land and erected Wanstead House. In 1840, when Thorpe went to New Zealand, Unwin bought his property, Johan Munna, and renamed it Undercliff. It was rented to the manager of the Canterbury Sugar Works. Joseph Nobbs bought Tyrrell's land and leased it to Gowan Pickering. At the end of Pickering's lease, Nobbs established a market garden on the property. The area became known as Nobbs Flat. When his first house was flooded, a new stone one was erected above the flood line. It still stands in Riverview Road. Access to the area at this time was via three river crossings, Pickering's Punt, Thorpe's Punt and Unwin's Bridge. Between 1847 and 1853, Piddock Arthur Thompson became one of the largest landowners in the area. Purchasing Pollock's land and Undercliff, which at that time was uninhabitable, he restored it and built a bridge to replace Thorpe's punt. Unwin subdivided some of his land and sold it as the village of Wanstead. One of the purchasers was Leslie Dugood, who named his property Valeta. In 1856, Wanstead was purchased by merchant Edward Campbell. He consolidated land sold by Unwin into one holding, leaving Valeta on the south and Undercliff on the north of his property. The Campbell family remained at Wanstead for over 30 years. John Park's widow Margaret died in 1859 and left the 50 acres of Park's camp to be divided between her 10 surviving children. By 1870, the wider area had become known as Parkstown, although some local people gave their address as Forest Hill. The building boom of the 1870s led to the establishing of a sandstone quarry in River Street. Local families found employment there. The first Wesleyan or Methodist services were held in local homes until a stone church was built in 1876. In 1884, Thomas Parks sold his farm to George Wallace Nicholl, a steamship proprietor who built Blink Bonnie which was located near the corner of today's Doris and Cameron Avenues. Mrs Jane Earle subdivided her land, the Earlwood Estate. During the 1890s, Undercliff became a popular venue for weekend picnics. At the bridge there was a boat shed, shops, swimming hole and the Riverside Inn. Letters complaining about nude bathers at Cooks River appeared in newspapers. Artist Sidney Long painted a scene of nude bathers at Cooks River. In 1895, Francis Hocking purchased land from Thomas Parks and built Grandview. At the rear of his William Street property, Hocking Brothers Builders had a timber yard and joinery shop. The southern and western suburbs Ocean Outfall Sewer, which crosses Cooks River by Viaduct and goes under Undercliff Road and Bayview Avenue, was constructed between 1895 and 1899. When land was advertised at Undercliff in 1901, Homer Street was still a track. In 1902, the Forest Hill Progress Association was formed, although the district was still known as Parkstown. 
1905, 198 blocks of the Unwinds Hill estate were auctioned. A small settlement developed in Undercliff Road and Unwinds Ridge Road, today's Bayview Avenue. The name of the area was officially changed to Forest Hill and by 1906 there was a daily postal delivery from Canterbury Post Office. In 1907, George Frederick Hocking purchased six acres of land in Homer Street between the present day St James Street and View Street and built Durham Bar. When the Forest Hill School of Arts opened in River Street in 1908, the area was described as a cluster of about 90 houses. Most of the houses had been built in the last two or three years and appeared to be occupied by labouring men's families. In 1909, the School of Arts property and funds were transferred to the Progress Association. There were two quarries in Undercliff, Jackson's and Swebbles. They supplied stone for curbs and gutters, headstones, homes and public buildings. 66 Undercliff Road is a stone house built by George Swebble. Stone from Jackson's quarry was used to build homes in today's Jackson Place. The last big project using Undercliff Stone was the runway at Mascot Airport in the 1940s. Waterworth Park, formerly Walleye Park, was dedicated in 1911 in honour of Alderman Ashton Waterworth. Today, Canterbury Velodrome is located there. In 1912, today's permanent avenue, Prince Edward Avenue area, was described as the wilds of Cooks River Country and the hinterland of Australia when scouts camped in the scrub among rocky hills. The Boy Scout camp was visited by Chief Scout Baden Powell. A tram service to Undercliff opened in 1912. Passengers going to Forest Hill had to walk the remainder of their journey. In 1915, St George's Church was established as a mission church. Church of England services had been held in the Progress Hall from 1909. The Progress Association's name changed from Forest Hill to Earlwood. In 1916, Earlwood Public School opened. Fanny Jurak gave an exhibition of Olympic swimming at Undercliff to raise funds for the Return Soldiers Association in 1916. Where to Live in 1917 stated, Undercliff is only really just beginning to open up and there are any amount of fine building sites available. The tongue of land extending from Tempe Railway Station to as far out as Earlwood would be extremely hard to beat as a desirable place to build for people on the lookout for fine location and picturesque views. In 1918, Forest Hill was officially named Earlwood. Undercliff remained a separate suburb until 1993. Undercliff Progress Hall, now the Pontian Club in Riverview Road, was erected and widely used by the community. After World War I, the area changed from semi-rural to a settled suburb. The War Service Homes Commissioner purchased 73 acres of land. A subdivision was created west of Wardell Road for returned soldiers and their families. Streets were named after famous men and battles. In 1921, land was acquired for Earlwood Park. At that time, it was used for joy flights. In 1922, a new Methodist church was erected. Stone from the original church was used for the parsonage fence. The first Roman Catholic service was held in the Undercliff Progress Hall in 1922. The following year, the church purchased Durham Bar for a convent. It was demolished in 1926 to build a church. The present Our Lady of Lords Church was opened in 1954. With the tram line being extended from Undercliff to Earlwood in 1924, real estate advertising flourished. The Grandview Estate subdivision was advertised as the Bellevue Hill of the Western Suburbs. The gem of Earlwood Estate was on the rise of the hill and surrounded by beautiful homes. The Pines Estate on an outstanding plateau with extensive views, eight minutes walk from the tram terminus and close to the shopping centre and schools. In 1925, a picture theatre being built on the south side of Homer Street, opposite the present-day hotel, 
was damaged by a gale. The Elwood Theatre opened in 1927 and one of the first films shown was Fast and Furious. In 1931 it was renamed the Mayfair Theatre. In 1926 Kennedy's Hall at 285 Homer Street was licensed. It became a popular venue for community events. The Presbyterian Church held its first service there before erecting a church hall in Collingwood Avenue in 1927. The Elwood Salvation Army Corps was founded in 1929 and met in Kennedy's Hall. The first Citadel opened in Elwood Avenue in 1933. This was replaced by a new building in 1974. In 1928, Undercliff School opened. The first Baptist church service was held in Kennedy's Hall in 1928. Land was acquired on the corner of Homer Street and Richard Avenue. The church's foundation stones were laid in 1934. Despite objections from the local community, the Irwood Hotel opened in 1931. In 1932, a Church of Christ was established. The site for the present church in Burlington Avenue was acquired in the 1930s. The tram track from Undercliff to Earlwood was duplicated in 1933. The first section of Girraween Park was dedicated in 1935. Kennedy's Hall was rebuilt in 1940 to become the Chelsea Cinema. A temporary library opened in a garage on the corner of Homer and William Streets in 1947. The present library opened in 1952. St George's War Memorial Church was opened on the 25th of September 1955. In 1957 the tram service was replaced by buses. The Mayfair Theatre closed in 1958. The building was demolished and shops built on the site. During the 1960s people of Greek background began to move into the area. The Chelsea Cinema closed in 1971. It reopened under new management and name, showing predominantly Greek films. Finally closing in 1983, the building was converted for commercial purposes. Today it is a wine shop. The Undercliff Methodist Church, built in 1923 in Bayview Avenue, closed in 1976 and was purchased by the Greek Orthodox Church. In 1980, an attempt to move Elwood's historic 19th century bell-type letter receiver was thwarted. The Gulf Whitlam Park naming ceremony took place in 1982. Previously owned by the Department of Works, the land was handed over to the local council and transformed for recreational purposes. Today, Irwood is primarily a residential area with commercial development along Homer Street. If you enjoyed this, subscribe to our channel for notification of more suburban Sydney videos. It's free. And check out our website, stpeterscooksriverhistory.wordpress.com.